So you want to know more about cable sizes, what happens if you go up or down, what kind of effect it has on the performance and efficiency of your system. Well, I'm very happy you're watching this video because it's pretty easy to mess it up, but it's also pretty easy to make the right choices and therefore boosting the performance and efficiency of your system. In this video, I explain the basic principles about wire sizing and the theory behind it. And I'll give you tips and tricks how to get the best setup for your system. My name is Jesse, I'm a renewable energy engineer. I have run several companies in the design and installation of battery-based off-grid solar energy systems, and I've recently held the position of energy officer for the United Nations. I have founded the company Solar Solution, through which I share my knowledge and expertise through free videos and articles, as well as through personal advice and support through my website. Okay, so let's get started. I'll provide you the information in four different topics. The first one will look at the effect that changing wire sizes has on the performance of your system. In the second topic, we'll briefly look at the two main international standards that you might come across for defining wire sizes. In the third topic, we'll actually dig deeper into the material and I'll give you a few tips and tricks and guidelines how you can choose the right wire size for your setup. And the last one is a bonus topic in which I'll explain to you how you can improve the overall performance of your system. Okay, so the first topic, what effects does changing the wire size has on your system? Now, the first thing I would like you to remember is that whenever you conduct electricity through a wire, you will always lose energy and you will always encounter a voltage drop. Now, the second thing I would like you to remember is that you will always encounter a resistance in the wire as you conduct electricity. But the interesting thing is that there's an inverse linear proportional relationship between the cross-sectional area of the wire and the amount of resistance that you might encounter. Or to say it in fewer words, if your cable size goes up, your resistance goes down. So as your wire size goes up, your resistance goes down. As your resistance goes down, by the end of your wire, your voltage drop goes down. As the voltage drop goes down, the actually voltage available at your appliance goes up. And as the voltage goes up at your appliance, the power goes up. So that means that you will have more power available at your appliance. Now on top of that, what also happens is that as you increase your wire size, you reduce your resistance. And with a low resistance, as you conduct electricity through the wire, you lose less electricity. Less of the electricity is turned into heat. Okay, so let's look at the international standards for wire sizes. The first one is the American Wire Gauge or AWG, and they have a very uh, creative setup. They describe the smallest wire size with the biggest number. So the smallest wire size is 40, which is this any mini tiny wire. Then if you want to go one size up, you go to 39, one size up, 38, one size up, 37, all the way up to one. Then if you want to go bigger, you go to zero. Bigger than zero is double zero, and then you have triple zero and quadruple zero. So quadruple zero is the biggest wire size in the AWG, in the American Wire Gate standard. Okay, there's just one thing I would like you to remember about this standard. If you increase the wire size by one, you increase the diameter of the copper by 1.123. That's easy, right? Up one in size, increase diameter by 1.123. And then of course, the opposite is also true. If you reduce one size, you divide the diameter of the copper by 1.123. So the other standard is the metric version, which is the international standard from the International Electrotechnical Commission number 6228. Not a very fancy name, I think. But the good thing about the standards is that it's pretty straightforward. They divide the classes of wire sizes based on the cross-sectional area of the copper. So the surface area of the copper itself, and they describe it with the unit of square millimeters. Okay, so let's move on to the more practical topic. How do you choose the right wire size for your system? Now, I often get asked the question, Jesse, what's the maximum amount of amperage I can feed through my cable? Now, this is very important, but I believe there's something else that overrules that topic. What you should focus on instead is realizing an acceptable voltage drop by the end of your wire. So the voltage drop of your wire is a result of the amperage that's flowing through it and the total resistance of the wire. Okay, so let's assume that you cannot reduce the amperage flowing through the wire. So then the only thing you can do is trying to reduce the resistance of the total setup, which you can do by reducing the length of the wire or by reducing the ambient temperature. So the reason why I'm saying this is because it's a topic that is often overlooked. If your wire will run through your engine compartment behind your stove or through a hot ceiling where the sun is burning on it, the temperature of the wire will be increased and as the temperature increases, the resistance also increases. Okay, so given this information, how do you calculate your voltage drop and what kind of value should you aim for? 
Well, there's plenty of free calculators online. I also have one on my website. I'll provide a link in the description below. And you should aim for reducing the voltage drop below 3%. And you can do this by adjusting the wire size that you'll be using in your system. So now that you know how to manage the voltage drop by the end of your wire, how do we now reduce the energy losses due to the current flowing through the actual wire itself? So the energy losses in the wire are mainly determined by three things. The first one is the length, and you're already trying to make it as short as possible. The second one is the wire size, we already discussed that before. And the last one is the current, the amperage running through the wire. So typically it's quite difficult to reduce the amount of amperage flowing through the wire because your load or your appliance is using whatever it needs to use. But sometimes there are possibilities of reducing your current and this leads us to the last topic regarding how to improve the efficiency of your overall system. So when we talk about trying to improve the overall efficiency and performance of the system, what we're actually trying to do is lower the energy losses. Now since we know that the energy losses in your system are closely related to the amperage flowing through your wires, if we would reduce the amperage, we would reduce the losses. So there's an easy way how to reduce the amperage, it's by increasing the voltage. If you double the voltage, you cut the amperage in half. If you multiply the voltage by 4, you divide the amperage by 4. Now there are two ways in which this is typically done, which is either way increasing the voltage on your power generation side, so from your solar panels or your wind generator, or by increasing the voltage on your battery bank. So from going from 12 volt to 24, 36 or 48 volt. Okay, so now a question for you. If you like this content, but there's something else that you'd like to learn more about, let me know in the comments below. And I'll use that as inspiration to provide new videos for you. And of course, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I would always appreciate that. So that's all for now. See you in the next video.